This is the Industry 9's new Hydra Hub, and this is what it sounds like. Hey everyone, Dan here at Fanatic Bike Co. We're talking about the brand new Hydra Hub from Industry 9. You're familiar with Industry 9. They were started in 2005 by Clint Spiegel in Asheville, North Carolina. He started using his dad's machine shop to build the hubs that we know and love so well. In 2013, they introduced the torch system of hubs. That's what we have here. That is a six pole, two phase, 120 point engagement design. So that means that three poles are engaging on their 60 tooth drive ring at once. Two times 60 gives us 120 points of engagement. And that has sort of stood the test of time really well. They've been at the head of the pack as far as, as hub engagement for many, many years. Chris King has 72 points of engagement. Hope has 44. DT Swiss comes at 18 points of engagement. You can upgrade that. But needless to say, they've been killing it for a while. So why did they decide to build a new hub? Well, they're not ones to rest on their laurels and they saw a number of things in their hubs that they could improve upon, least of which was points of engagement. With that, they have spent the last two years designing, testing, refining what they call Hydra. Hydra is the Greek name for a three-headed dragon that Hercules fought, you'll remember. He'd start lopping off its heads and they would keep springing back with more. Here I've got a Hydra Hub that has been out in the wild for some time now, I wanna say a year. It is like the old Torch Hub, a six pole design, but it has a number of differences. First and foremost, you'll see that the drive ring has way more teeth, almost twice as many teeth. It's a 115 tooth drive ring versus the 60 tooth drive ring that the Torch Hub used. Still does have those six paws, same as before, but instead of engaging in two phases, they engage individually. That makes it a six phase design. Six paws times 115 teeth gives us 690 points of engagement. Now, that is obviously the biggest thing that you'll notice about these hubs that you'll hear. Does that make a difference for us out on the trail when we're out riding our bike? Now, that is probably a matter of opinion. Probably depends how you ride your bike. If you're one, a rider that really loves to get after technical single track, this might make more of a difference for you. It really comes to play when you're riding at slow speeds and need to get up and over something really technical. And you can throw in a bunch of little pedal kicks really, really quickly, quick succession to get up and over that root section. Another advantage that Jacob McGahey, Industry 9's vice president brought up that I hadn't actually considered about really high engagement hubs is that for technical climbing, there's never a point where you're not putting power down if your feet are on the pedals. With lower engagement hubs, you stand up and then go to crank and there can be several degrees of freedom before that power hits the dirt. At that point, your rear tire can spin out, cause you to not clean, clean a section that you might otherwise have gotten. That's not the case with a hub like the Hydra because that power is always there, sort of comes up to speed more evenly. Not something I'd considered. I don't do a ton of technical climbing, but if that's you, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, like I said, I'm currently on a Hope Pro 4 hub that only has 44 teeth. In my mind, you sort of get used to whatever you're riding. You adjust how you time your pedal strokes it's really not the end of the world as far as I'm concerned. What I do really, really like about the Hydra Hub is what they have done to increase the longevity of the design. Now with their torch system, they had a 17 mil outer diameter axle, which you can see here. On the Hydra design, they've dropped that down to a 15 mil outer diameter. And what that extra space lets them do is run slightly larger bearings. You can see in here, throughout the whole hub, they have replaced the bearings with 20 to 25% larger bearings, and they say that actually gives them up to 25% increase in longevity. One really big one that I saw as a weak point in the torch hub was in the driver. This bearing right here, you can see, is now 
notably significantly larger and that's going to make it last a lot longer. These hubs were not, they didn't fall apart on you. I have a set on my downhill bike that I've been running for years. I've replaced the bearings once for all of them. I did this bearing once on top of that. Like I said, several seasons of abuse at Winter Bike Park and shuttling. It wasn't the end of the world, but I'm happy to hear that they've made those changes. Other things that they've done, they've increased the amount of contact that your rear through axle has with the hub. There used to be a point in here, actually almost half of the axle, where the diameter got larger. They've closed that down so that on the new hub, there is far more contact throughout the whole system on your through axle. They say that makes for a stiffer design, which at the end of the day is just gonna make for a better ride. One last point that I wanted to mention that I think is pretty neat about how this engages, you might be wondering if there's only one pawl engaged at a time, does that make for weak point? Now, when the hub is off the bike, you do get one pawl engaging at the time, but when it's mounted up, the pawl that engages acts as a fulcrum. This is twisting this way, and it kind of uses some flex in the system to sort of spin backwards and up to three other pawls preceding that pawl that's engaging will actually flex into place and engage. So you can have up to four pawls engaging at once between two, three, and four. So in effect, this is an extremely durable, burly system that you're never gonna have an issue with one pawl being the only thing that's transmitting all that power down to your wheel. Now, I know that the reason a lot of you are here is to see what this hub sounds like. I've currently got it all cleaned out. We're gonna put a little bit of Dumond Tech free hub grease in there. You can adjust the volume level of your hub using either a thicker or thinner lubricant. This grease is sort of in the middle. Dumond Tech also makes a free hub oil, which will make for a louder design or you can use something even more viscous than this fairly light grease and really quiet things down. But let's take a moment and do a little sound test here. Here we've got the Torch Classic Free Hub. And here we've got the brand new Hydra Hub with Dumontech Free Hub Grease. Pretty noticeable difference. So why is the new hub that much quieter, you ask? It has way more engagement. My first thought was, is this going to be louder? Well, it turns out because the paws are actually smaller, there's less mass whacking them into the drive ring. Also, each step of each tooth is not quite as tall, so there's less time for each pawl to accelerate into the drive ring. On that same note, there's also less distance for the spring to push on it, all of which makes for a slightly quieter design. Obviously, it sounds pretty different. You're working with almost six times as much or as many engagements, so it does have a fairly different sound. But at the end of the day, what you do get is a slightly quieter noise. In my mind, that's a positive. That was one of the things I really liked about the Onyx Hub. Depending on how you feel about it, like I said, you can run a less viscous lubricant. Dumontex Free Hub Oil will get you a noise much more similar to the old Torch Hubs. If this is something you want to do, probably one question that a lot of you have is, can I upgrade my existing hubs to the Hydra internals? Fortunately you are not able to do that. The drive ring essentially wedges it or locks itself into your hub. There's not a great way of getting those out. But given that you would have to get a whole new driver, axle, bearings, the whole shebang, it wouldn't actually be that much less expensive. So what I recommend is if you want new Hydra wheels, sell your old wheels, hop on our bike builder, excuse me, wheel builder, build up a set of 
hydro, hydro wheels with either their system spokes, that's their alloy spokes. We can also do traditional J-bend spokes. We don't charge for labor on these wheel builds. There's also a Fanatic discount that gets applied at the end. You're gonna pretty much come out pretty even depending on how much you can sell your wheels for. If you don't wanna deal with selling your wheel set, you can also send us your old system wheels. We are certified to rebuild these. So we can put your old rim and spokes or put a new rim on there if it's time for that. Rebuild them, ship them back to you. You can, if you want, you can do this with just your rear wheel, then you don't have to replace both of them. I should mention that there's a few changes on the front hub, primarily in bearing size, things to improve longevity, not quite as drastic as on the rear wheel, but they have improved that as well. If you have any questions about this, please let us know. It is a great product. Like I said, this one has been out on the trails for a long time now. The bearings still feel, still feel wonderful. And we will be getting these in shortly if they're not already in the wheel builder. So check them out. Thanks for watching, y'all.